Dr. Marty Natalagawa, welcome to In Conversation. It's nearly two years since the coup in Myanmar. Uh, the country has slid into a civil war, and this is in the heart of Asia. Is ASEAN failing in its bid to resolve the crisis in Myanmar? Well, well it's certainly a litmus test for ASEAN. Unlike in, in decades past, uh, developments in Myanmar is taking place against the backdrop of an ASEAN uh, that is now supposedly uh, a, a community uh, of nations that uh, embraces the notions of good governance, embraces the notions of democratic principles and, and human rights. The past couple of years, we have seen uh, valiant efforts by ASEAN uh, to, to address the developments. Uh, the initial signs were positive in the sense that uh, the countries of ASEAN were able to uh, very quickly, relatively quickly, uh, consolidate their, their response by coming up with a five-point consensus. But there is a sense of drift uh, at the moment as we approach the two years uh, 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 period of the post-coup uh, situation uh, that ASEAN must really enhance its, its, its uh, efforts uh, on, on Myanmar because uh, as days goes by, uh, we are seeing uh, not improvement in the situation, but rather uh, uh, regression uh, uh, as well. Myanmar's junta has spent the last couple of years, or at least the past year and a half, uh, committing atrocities in, in defiance of all that it has agreed with ASEAN leaders. I think it's highly admir admirable that uh, many in ASEAN uh, at the moment are still saying that we will not allow uh, the situation in Myanmar uh, hijack or, or overwhelm ASEAN's community efforts and ASEAN community. But um, that, that is not sufficient. Uh, ASEAN must not only see, uh, declare their, their uh, steadfast commitment to ensure the developments in Myanmar doesn't affect ASEAN community building, but we must actually act in a, in a very concrete and, and a manifest manner uh, to address the issue. For instance, one of the key elements of the five-point consensus is the idea of cessation of violence. And uh, up till now, we have essentially uh, relied upon the peaceful intent of the junta uh, to actually cease uh, uh, the uh, violence against innocent civilians and the like. But uh, we, ASEAN must ask itself how it can help ensure that uh, uh, outcome. For instance, is there a role or is there a possibility for ASEAN to deploy, whether in, in, on, on, on the ground or elsewhere, some kind of a monitoring mission to ensure that the uh, pledge or the commitment to end violence is actually uh, carried out. And it would be even more powerful if such a monitoring uh, mission, monitoring capacity by ASEAN is authorized by the United Nations Security Council. Dr. Natalagawa, in order for ASEAN to achieve that though, there's going to have to be more than the five-point consensus. There has to be consensus among members within ASEAN itself. And from the outside, looking in to ASEAN, the divisions are there, they are apparent. What is holding ASEAN back in making further headway? Now, we are now at a stage where uh, there is a risk that some ASEAN countries can speak eloquently and forcefully on, on issues, developments in Myanmar, but others choose to remain silent. And, and as a result, there is a sense that uh, ASEAN itself is not responding uh, in, in unison to this. So I think uh, first and foremost, it is important for ASEAN uh, member states, uh, the nine ASEAN member states in this case, uh, to be able to consolidate and to, to have a, a real frank and candid exchanges that we are all on the same page uh, on, on the issue of Myanmar. And the, um, the decision to exclude the uh, political representatives uh, from, from ASEAN summit and ASEAN foreign ministers is an extremely important uh, decision. But, uh, you know, I mean, to make it even more meaningful, I think is it may not be sufficient to simply leave the seat vacant, but rather to actually invite openly uh, the NUG to, 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 to take up that seat in the absence of, of uh, the, the junta's uh, presence. And, and, and I think that will be a wake up call uh, to the junta that their intransigence 
they're not turning up uh, is, is actually not cost free to them. Isolation for the junta is their comfort zone, uh, by the way. And, and, and they're, they're, I don't think they feel uh, you know, being isolated uh, and be having the notion of like the world against them is the, uh, the, uh, the comfort zone for the, as far as the junta is concerned. So we need to be sure that uh, it's not an empty seat that ASEAN is having in, with Myanmar, but we have the NUG actually and the other democratic representatives uh, be there to speak about the developments in Myanmar. But Dr. Natalegawa, uh, with all due respect, Myanmar's military junta has already signaled that uh, it doesn't want ASEAN to interfere in internal matters by doing that very thing. Uh, what do you anticipate would be the reaction by the junta? Well, the, uh, the second point of the five-point consensus speaks of promoting uh, having constructive dialogue among all the parties concerned. And this sec second point is not a nine member states of ASEAN's uh, a commitment or, or a wish. It also includes the junta who uh, agreed to, to bind themselves to this, this consensus. That is why, notwithstanding the, the shortcomings of the five-point consensus, it is important to lock that in as a minimum basic uh, requirement because the junta's uh, hands are tied up to that process. And uh, under that ages, under that, uh, that notion of having constructive dialogue among all parties concerned, then engagement uh, with the uh, with the NUG and the other democratic leaders uh, can be, in my view, can be can be justified. And looking at the past summit, where essentially ASEAN says there is a need to ASEAN to come up with a with a plan on how to implement the NU the uh, five points to recommend a plan to the summit. To me uh, personally, I'm, I, with the deepest of apologies and, and, and huge respect for all ASEAN member states colleagues, it's a little bit uh, uh, too little uh, to speak at this stage only to come up with a plan how, on how to implement. And this is a recommendation as well. This is a time to actually just take actions. Does it concern you at all how much impact the five point consensus has had or lack of it thereof on the people's lives in Myanmar? The five point uh, consensus to me uh, is not necessarily the problem uh, per se. I think it's more its implementation, especially the over-reliance, the over-reliance on the junta to somehow unilaterally uh, transform itself uh, to become uh, decent. Uh, and that is not going to happen. And that is why it has to be a five a point consensus plus. The plus means uh, more serious efforts from our ASEAN side to actually see what they can do, it can do to implement, uh, to ensure that those five-point consensus uh, are, are implemented. So Indonesia now is uh, rotational chair uh, of ASEAN. Uh, it's said that it will set up a dedicated office to coordinate the handling of the crisis uh, in Myanmar. It has this timeline of one year. Is that enough of a runway to do anything? I would have thought an office at this, within the secretariat of the ASEAN secretariat would be a, a more, uh, of a more sustained presence. Then we have a situation, come what may, uh, wherever, whoever is the chair, uh, or currently whoever is the special envoy, there is already a, a, a body of uh, knowledge and, and institutional memory and, and knowledge that, is, that can be handed over in a sustained um, manner. But uh, I, don't, I guess it, it, 
it can't do any harm having such an office. But what I've, I'm a little bit concerned about is that the uh, the setting up of this special envoy right from the beginning as part of the, the third point of the uh, of the um, five point consensus is beginning to appear as if the problem is being contracted out one person, whether he or she may be able to come to visit Myanmar, uh, to meet with the Aung San Suu Kyi. Uh, when I thought this is a whole of ASEAN approach, uh, all ASEAN's firepower, diplomatic firepower must be uh, governized, must be mobilized to this effort. It can't be simply contracted out to the one single person, however well supported he or she is by an office, uh, it's almost like becoming an out of sight and out of mind type of approach. And, and I hope that it is well worth it for ASEAN, all of ASEAN member states, leaders, ministers, to put all their joint efforts in, in this endeavor because all this other talk of ASEAN community will become uh, pretty meaningless <laughs> if Myanmar situation is allowed to, to continue. Every moment of delay means more death, death and more violence being committed. There are those who have suggested, Dr. Natalagawa, that the uh, Myanmar's military junta has in some way benefited from leveraging on ASEAN's uh, mechanisms, the platform, in the way that it works. Do you see it that way? The current situation, the status quo, where, where we've been the past couple of years, actually for Myanmar, the junta, uh, this is their comfort zone. I completely agree with the notion of the junta not being at, uh, invited to ASEAN summits, the foreign minister not to be invited to uh, the ASEAN foreign ministers meeting, completely agree. But at the same time, now we are risking a situation where they are not being held accountable uh, to what is happening uh, because having an empty seat for them uh, is, is perfect uh, till now because they, they, they don't have to say anything about five-point uh, uh, consensus anymore. So I think there is a need for, some, for a, a, a parallel process, ASEAN-led, ASEAN-initiated, that is informal in nature, or even can be even formal in nature, on ASEAN meeting on Myanmar. Not, not ASEAN summit discussing among others Myanmar issue, but a standalone ASEAN uh, meeting on Myanmar, whereby the junta, the NUG, all the other uh, democratic but, leaders. But Dr. Nat but Dr. Natalagawa, who gets to determine who those stakeholders are? If the junta can merely uh, you know, ascribe the fact that uh, they say that, well, we're going to designate this particular group a terrorist group, as an example. Within ASEAN's diplomatic toolbox, uh, there are several possibilities. One party describe and feel the other side is of certain standing, certain characteristic. But if you have an informal non-meeting uh, uh, without prejudice to what, what the standings of the other side is, and it could be all inclusive, it could be proxy dialogue. I know that I risk misunderstanding in what I'm saying here. I'm, when, I, when I call for some kind of a dialogue uh, involving all the parties involved, uh, concerned, giving credibility or, or legitimacy to the junta. But we need to have them in the room, tell them what is expected of them and to hold them accountable. At the moment, it's a perfect it's a perfect world for them because they can simply, you know, I mean, deal with the people who they like, who they are they are friendly with, and and they can simply say, you know, whatever to to the five point consensus. And by the way, in terms of the timeline that you had mentioned before, we have the prospect of a so called elections to be held in Myanmar. Uh, I, I, we have been reading reports at the middle of this year. Now. That will be extremely important for ASEAN to anticipate. Surely this is the time for ASEAN to signal clearly to the world and to the junta, an election in the current circumstance will not be recognized by ASEAN. It will be a sham election. And that we, we call on the release of all political prisoners, including the Aung San Suu Kyi. And, and this kind of messaging must be sent right now not be made after a sham election is held and ASEAN is, is seen to be procrastinating or being divided.
Is it your firm belief, Dr. Natalagawa, that if elections were to be held at some point this year, under the prevailing conditions that we see in Myanmar, that any result could, could not possibly be democratic? Couldn't agree more with that kind of uh, impression or conclusion. How can we have an election in the current circumstance when people are being shot at? Uh, women, children, uh, all the vulnerable members of Myanmar society are being shot at and, and the civil society are not given voice. And, and to have, that is why I think it's extremely important for ASEAN to, at the moment, now from now on, to, to relay the message Whatever election that is being held under elections that are being held under the current circumstances will not be part of the solution. Will not obtain ASEAN recognition, and that it doesn't mean that whomever is elected by that election will somehow then be able to turn up at ASEAN summit uh, uh, as a result. And and uh, I think that kind of message must be made crystal clear, loud and clear. Well, as talk of these elections continues uh, to sort of bubble up now and again. How should ASEAN better respond then to this? If such an election is held, and I think it's very important for ASEAN to be seen on the same page. Just look at what's happening now in, at the United Nations uh, General Assembly whenever a resolution on, on Myanmar is, is voted on or on, on the Human Rights Council in Geneva. Uh, there is not a common ASEAN position. Uh, and I, I mean, there is no common ASEAN position on the issue. The fact that permanent representative of the previous administration is still sitting uh, in the General Assembly at the UN General Assembly rather than the junta's representative is not due to ASEAN's unity. It's because the so-called General Committee of the UN General Assembly feels that the decision should be deferred. Now, I think it is very extremely important for ASEAN to be able to begin from now, uh, not quite choreograph, but at least anticipate what their response would be. And, and uh, Indonesia will be having that key role as well to navigate. I hope Indonesia can continue its traditional role of, on the one hand, pressing for uh, continued progress on good governance, human rights, democratic principles issues, but at the same time, maintaining the unity of the ASEAN home, because it is a twin objectives. It is not one at the expense of the other. And, and what I'm seeing over the past couple of years is that we have been extremely eloquent on the one of them, which is the pushing for Myanmar's uh, uh, democratic agenda, but the ASEAN unity is uh, fraying somewhat. Dr. Natalagawa, why should the people of Myanmar believe that ASEAN can do more for them, that they haven't been forgotten, and that ASEAN can, in fact, wage peace for Myanmar? ASEAN's contributions in establishing and uh, peace in our part of the world is one that is tremendous, has been tremendously important, uh, enabling us to enjoy a uh, peace dividend. But waging peace uh, is something that has to be done, has to be done in a very persistent uh, manner. And I think uh, the situation that is now transpiring in Myanmar over the past couple of years, in a way, perhaps, is the consequence of a, of a for foreign policy outlook in this part of the world in recent years that has become inward looking. Uh, you know, things like uh, promotion of democratic governance and et cetera, is no longer seen to be a primary preoccupation. Uh, countries are, tend to be more uh, um, looking at immediate material benefit in their foreign policy outlook, mercantilist in their outlook. And as a result, we have allowed progress that was still vulnerable and fragile to, to, uh, to, uh, to backtrack and, and to face headwinds and, and we are where we are. And what makes me despondent in some ways is that, you know, we are losing uh, the, the confidence of the Myanmar people uh, in terms of can, does ASEAN matter? That would, can ASEAN actually make a positive difference? We have mattered in the past. Uh, and in, in delivering and making sure that democratic uh, transformation occur in, in Myanmar. The Myanmar issue is not only a litmus test for ASEAN. Uh, it is a litmus test, clearly, but it is now an existential threat to ASEAN community. Uh, if we choose to be business as usual, then the entire ASEAN community vision or project will be, uh, will be uh, undermined as a result. Dr. Martina Talagawa, thank you very much for being on In Conversation.